and we've got almost everybody here, but but uh, I want to keep track of this and post it for everybody. Um, so this is from the Substitution Kinetics Lab PDF. This is going to be the bulk of your write-up is going to be um, taking the information that I give you in terms of um, in terms of the results and use that to see if it matches basically what what you are um, expecting from um, knowing a little bit about substitution reactions. So basically we're testing SN1 and SN2 kinetics to see if all the things that we've been taught actually match up. Um, so, and it does a pretty good job of explaining, okay, in experiment one, we're testing the reaction rate of SN2 reactions as a function of substrate structure. Just wordy, but it tells you more or less what the different um, things are that we're testing. We, it's telling us that we're putting it into SN2 conditions um, because we're doing this in acetone, which is an aprotic solvent. And then we are going to, and then you're going to see if it goes through a substitution reaction. And by keeping it in an aprotic solvent, we can we can basically ensure that it's predominantly going to go through SN2. In an aprotic solvent, we're not going to stabilize things enough for it to go through an SN1 reaction quickly. So by doing it in acetone, that limits it to only SN2. And then in experiment two, we're going to do the same reactants, except we're going to do it in ethanol instead. And with it being in ethanol, ethanol is protic, which means we're going to slow down the SN2 version and we're going to predominantly focus on the SN1 reactions. So what, what these results are is, okay, if I'm going to take a primary brom, one bromobutane, and I'm going to take it and react it through SN2, and we just have a way of, of establishing how long it takes to react is, was basically how long did it take before you saw precipitation forming, before you saw solid forming in your test tube. So your, your raw data is just going to be in how many minutes did it take to react. And so experiment one, test tube one, is going to be the bromobutane going through an SN2 reaction. Experiment one, test tube two, is going to be two bromobutane. And then it's going to be two bromo, two methyl propane. So in other words, a T-butyl or a, a T-butyl group with a bromine on it. So we go, we have a primary, a secondary, and a tertiary bromide that all are going to have the same molecular weight because it's going to be bromobutane, bromobutane, methyl propane. So which same molecular weight. Um, and so the only thing that's changing in test tubes one, two, and three is where is the bromine? Is it primary, secondary, tertiary? And then we can look at the results and see how long it took for the reaction to happen. NA just means it doesn't matter, nothing ever changed. No reaction was observed. Um, and I believe these are, I think these, these are mostly the results from, um, the raw results from one of the groups from last, um, from last year. Although I added a few things they weren't able to get to work, I made up data for those that mirror what you should see. Um, this is uh, Emily Griffin and Eva uh, Fuller's data. Those of you guys who know them, you can tell them you played around with their data from, from OCHEM. You still see them. I don't know. If, I think Eva's still around. I don't know where Emily is. Um, I think last I heard, she was doing an internship at, uh, at the Water Utility District. She got to, to go in and play with the, the water quality stuff over there. Um, so then all of these, there's a total of seven experiments. Um, and you basically are just going to go through and um, what I want you guys to do is say what's mixed, what is the overall reaction for each of these test tubes. So write out the whole reaction for experiment one, test tube one, one bromobutane plus the sodium iodide. So I, it's iodide replacing bromine. It's a substitution reaction where you're going to wind up making an iodide. Um, and in, in the SN1 reactions, it's silver nitrate in ethanol. 
Um, and in this case, it is the substitutions you're actually putting in nitro group in NO, NO3, NO2 group is being attached to the um, to the substrate. Um, and the reason we use that in this case is because that nitro nitrate is a reactive enough compound. And when you put silver nitrate is soluble in water, but silver bromide is not. So when you replace the bromine with the nitro group, you make silver nit silver bromide as a solid. Um, So, and then the, the, the other aspect of each of these is what conclusion can we draw from each of these? So let me see what exactly it has it all. Here's your write-up. Describe the results and in terms of what we have learned about SN1 and SN2. So basically, you know, if, if the results say that tertiary reacts faster than primary, you're just rank, you know, this shows, write a sentence, this shows tertiary halides under SN1 conditions react faster than primary. So it's basically review of substitution reactions. Um, and it's a good way to, um, to go through and actually show how you can test these things. You set up a bunch of tests in a row where you're directly saying, here's my primary, here's my secondary, what physical evidence do I have that, set, that supports the various concepts that we've been looking at? Okay. Um, the other piece of this, so, and actually I will, I will change the data because the data that I gave you is as a PDF, but it didn't put the, the um, lines on there. I'll put it in there as an Excel so you can actually see the difference like the, like I'm, I have shown here. Um, I'll link that instead. Um, the other piece of this is a some is a review of of how kinetics works as far as if it's a first order reaction, what happens when when we change concentration. And so it's a lot of hypotheticals, um, and it has a an actual chemistry reaction simulator where you're gonna go in and put in different reactants. It doesn't have a lot of OCHEM reactants. Otherwise, I would just have you actually simulate all of these experiments yourself instead of giving you the data, but it doesn't have bromobutane in there. Um, it's mostly inorganic stuff. So it'll, um, the reaction or the questions it has you answer are basically, okay, set up the reaction this way, hit run, and then what numbers did you get? Which of these numbers did you get? And then what happens when you double the concentration or what happens when you change this? Um, and so it's basically follow the, the directions on here and set this all up properly. So I'll, I'll walk you through the first one. It says, set up the reaction for the synthesis of hydrogen iodide, which is, so you want hydrogen gas, iodine gas, and 2HI, goes to 2HI. That's our balanced reaction to make hydroiodic acid. So we go in here and it works as a, um, a search. So you can just type in H2, then you just have to get down to hydrogen. And iodide as a gas. And then we don't have a third reactant, so you'd leave that one blank. Product one is just going to be HI. as a gas. And then here's where you balance it is in stoichiometric coefficients. So it should be one to one to two. One H2 molecule plus one I2 molecule makes two HIs. And then the initial concentration is going to be in um, pressure units. And so you just want to make sure that that matches what the um, starting conditions are that you're given. It says 0.5 bar, 0.6 bar, and zero. And I believe that's everything we need. We want to set the temperature to 721, leaving the pressure factor default of 1.0. That that's has to do with the, the kinetic constant at the beginning. Um, remember that A 
equilibrium constant equals a times e to the minus delta e. Um, and so we can set all that. Seven twenty one. Pressure factor default. Set the reaction rate for zeroth order reaction. K equals one, zero, and zero. So that's over on the right hand side. And you just say we want to tell it what the reaction rate law looks like. So if we want it to be zero order, in other words, that the concentration does not affect the rate of the reaction, we leave x, y, and z as to the zero with power, and k is just going to be our rate constant. Um, and then when, all we have to do is. First, you can check if you did this right, if you check equation validity or balance the reaction, then down here it'll show you the, the uh, reaction. At least it should. Maybe you have to hit run reaction to do that. Yeah, there you got H2 plus iodine goes to 2HI, which is what we were looking for. And when you scroll down, it gives you a bunch of information about this, including graphs of the concentration versus time. And so this is going to be a big chunk of what you're going to use here, because if you want to know the time taken for the reaction to reach its final state, well, then we're going to go in here and look down at the table here and says, OK, the final time is 0 0.4229 seconds. So we fill that in, right? And so this is not requiring you to do a whole lot of analysis, it, a little bit, but you have to know where to look and what it means, what it's asking for. Um, but these should go, these are a lot like following a procedure in a lab. You don't have to know what you're doing in order to mix half a milliliter of this with half a milliliter of that and watch what happens. That's kind of what's going on here. You just have to know what the question is asking for to be able to answer it. And then it gives you pretty detailed, here's what you do next. Um, see what happens if you change it to a first order reaction. So we go up here and change X to one. And then when we hit run the reaction, we get, it's not zero order anymore because now as the, as the concentration of the hydrogen changes, that's going to affect the rate of the reaction. So we have a differential equation situation here. Um, and so that's going to affect the, the time it takes to get to the final state as well. So you can come down here and check that, et cetera, right? So it's, it's going to be a lot of check this. It's done the number crunching for you. Now it just leaves you to analyze what you have, right? Um, and like I said, I think it would take you guys about half an hour to do these. There's about six of them. Where it's, and then it asks you some qualitative questions, like if rate constant doubles, what happens to the time taken to complete the reaction or what happens to half-life when you do this to a rate law? Um, so a little bit of review of how kinetics works from Gen Chem. Um, and it don't, I'm less worried that you get all of these 100% right. If you fill them all in and it won't let you submit it till you finish them all. So I'm just gonna randomly fill them in. Um, so I can hit submit because what you actually are going to submit to show me that you did this is just a screenshot of your score from this. But don't worry if you don't have 100%, although I would encourage you to go back and see why you missed something. But this doesn't prevent you from going back and filling it in and getting 100%. Um, so I'm not going to grade you down if you don't have 100%. Just know that you should go back and, and see what you misunderstood. I think even I, I missed one the first time because some of these, the uh, numbers come out kind of really close together. Um, but then when you hit submit, it's just a Google form and you hit view score. And I just want a screenshot of this top section here. This shows that you did this. So randomly filling it in, I got five out of 14, right? Um, but so then you'll just attach this with your, with your write-up from the other piece to show me that you did it. All right? So that's your lab today. Um, 
and we are kind of focused more on actual lab results than the theory. We're just trying to connect the lab results to the theory, and I'm just giving you the lab results, right? But be paying attention to the procedure. What did you actually mix, and how does that apply to what we know about substitution? Does it match or not? Any questions? All right, well, I will leave this Zoom running. I'll open some breakout rooms. You guys can jump into those if you want, if you want to log off. Um, I know the internet is really spotty in Tahoe today, um, what with the wind and everything. Um, but I'll be here. If you guys have any questions, if everybody leaves, I'll probably log off too. Um, but as long as you guys are still here, I'll be here till four. <laughs>